Hello, I have your file in front of me and I tried Googling the issue that you had, but um, I'm going to turn off your, I couldn't find, it's not a Photoshop issue, it's more of an operating system issue. And I have a Mac and you probably have a PC. So here's an easy fix, okay? Um, and you can Google the issue, meaning try Googling drag and dropping files into Photoshop on a PC and see what the solution is, okay? But I'm going to turn off your graffiti for the minute and I'm going to show you a solution. You have stuff on this brick layer anyway, so I'm going to throw the brick layer away. Now, use this method. It's real simple. So let's go to File Open and let's just open up the images in the Asset folder. Here's the brick. So I'm going to just double click it and open it. Now, in the gray area over here, just right hand click and duplicate it. So all you have to do is change the destination to your PSD file. That's it. I mean, that's as simple as it gets. So let's go Control or Command W to close the file. And now you can see how if I needed to move it to a different layer, fine, but there's the new brick. Okay, let me turn off the stain. Now let me throw away the stain. So the stain is on a screen mode. So let's just go here and throw it away. Now I'll leave this selected, which is the graffiti layer so it goes one above there but now let's go to file open and now I'll open up the stain which I think is this one right here is that no that's the graffiti Mr. Sorio there's the stain so I'll open up the stain right hand click in the gray area duplicate layer to your PSD file and you have that solved I'll just say okay on the color space and hit control W or command W now we have to hit control T and we have to not hold the shift key and just make it fit the file. Just make it fit the file so it's got some bleed all the way around and I'm good to go. Now, as I said before, it goes to a screen mode and you can put it on any mode you want. I don't, it doesn't have to be on a screen mode, but now you can see I've stained the brick. Okay, perfect. Now. I want to turn on your graffiti and I want to show you how to cut a hole into the graffiti, okay? Meaning to see the mortar through the graffiti. So I'm going to turn it off for the moment and click to the brick layer. I'm going to turn off your stain layer, but make sure I'm selected on the brick layer and hit the W key for the magic wand. Make sure you're in the magic wand tool. I'm going to put the tolerance up to about 25 and make sure contiguous is off okay off so now I'm gonna get close and I'm gonna click the lightest area of the mortar now I'm gonna hold the shift key and click the darkest area of the mortar and it kinda of got a little bit too much of the dark area so this is what I'm gonna do I'm gonna control Z back one now I'm gonna lower the tolerance to about 10 and then I'm going to shift click the dark area of the mortar again. So let's use this as the dark area of the mortar right here. Let's hold the shift key and click. And now that got a better amount of the mortar. Let's click here and see. Yes, I did a good job there. And now I have most of the mortar and I have a little bit of the brick, but it doesn't really matter. So now I save this as mortar one. Now I saved it under the select menu. Now you can see there's mortar one over here. Okay, we'll work on the next one for the shadow in a minute, but I could use this if I click to your graffiti layer and turn it on. Now, I need to cut a hole in it. Okay, cut a hole in it. Now what's gonna happen when I click on this layer mask button is it may do the opposite of what I want. So let me just click it. Okay, it did the opposite of what I want. So all we have to do is invert this. We don't have to do anything different, just invert this, not inverse, invert. I want you to see that invert is under adjustments. It's right there. Invert deals with images. Inverse deals, which is right there, with selections. So just kind of remember that, okay? So if I'm selected on this mask, I just hit Command or Control I to invert it. Now, here's the problem. I'm going to Alt or Option click so I can see what color went on the mask. So here, holding Alt and clicking. Oops, it's black and I need it to be gray. 
So go back over to your mortar right over here, the one that you saved right over there. See it? I'm not going to click on it, but it's over in channels. Now control click on it. Now see how I chose a gray in the foreground color? So I'm going to click to the mask, hit Alt Backspace or Option Delete, and now I put gray on it. Now I'm going to deselect. Now what did gray do? If I just click back to the image, you're going to see. See how gray cut a slight hole through the mortar, through the graffiti, so I could see the mortar? Mm -hmm. And that's what I want you to do. Okay, so make sure, watch this movie a couple times, and make sure that your mask is filled with gray. How do you isolate the mask again? Just alt click on it. Okay, just so you can see. So first it was filled with black. Now I can't make a selection of this because it'll be the opposite of what I want. So use your mortar one. Here, I'll control click on it again. And now I could fill this up with gray. That's what I want you to do. So let me click back to the graffiti. Now let's make the shadow. I want you to understand what I'm going to do. So we are going to use mortar one to make a selection. So I just did that. So control click on it. Thank you. Now, I'm going to zoom in. And I'm going to zoom in up here so we can see just the regular bricks. See? See how this selection is the mortar? Hit the M key for marquee tool. Go down one, two, three. Go over one, two, three to the right. Now, that's another shape which is down and to the right. So if I use this shape and subtract it from the regular mortar one, I can then have an area for a shadow. See, I want the shadow to be under the bricks and to the right of the brick, but not all the way across. So now that I've done that and I went down three and over three, I'm going to save it. So that's what I want you to do. Save it as mortar two. Now, deselect, okay? Now look over here in channels. I'm gonna click on this and you can see how this is moved over to the bottom right. Do you see? That's what I want yours to do. So make sure that yours is doing what mine is doing. Okay, now click back up to the RGB image. Now hold control, click on mortar one, right on the icon. Now look inside the mortar two icon and if I hold alt, I get a minus sign. That means I can subtract mortar two from mortar one to get a shadow. So that's what I'm gonna do. I have control, alt, click. Now I only have left over a little area under the bricks and to the right of the bricks and I can select and save selection as shadow just so I don't lose it because it took me a while to get there, right? Okay, let's make a shadow layer. So let me zoom back out, leave it selected, click the new layer icon above the graffiti and name it shadow. Now just fill it with black. So I'm going to go up here so you can see it's going to fill with black. Let me zoom in. Black's my foreground color. I go option delete or alt backspace and look what happened. It filled with black. So do you remember how we had mortar one as a selection? How did we get the shadow selection? Well, we hit the M key, we moved it down three and to the right three, and we saved it as mortar two. Then we subtracted the mortar two shape from the mortar one shape. Now, let me show you what I'm talking about. Here's the mortar one shape, here's the mortar two shape. Now, if I subtract that one from this one, look what I get left over. Okay, so that is um, the best explanation I can come up with. Now, all I have to do now, um, I got to take this, so I'm going to pause this. Hold on. Hi, so I have filled your shadow layer with black. We're almost finished with this. Sorry for the long explanation, but you needed to see all this, right? So with the shadow layer selected, do two things. Filter, blur, Gaussian blur by about one and a half pixels, so 1.5, and say OK. Now we can lower just a tiny bit of opacity just to make it work a little better. And I want to show you something. So now look at how nice the shadow layer works underneath the, the, 
underneath the bricks. And if you have to watch this a couple more times to understand mortar one and mortar two, that's fine. But I wanted you to know how simple one selection is to subtract from another selection. Okay, so you can just watch it again. Now, here's my point. Un why I wanna show you this, let me back out. Uncheck the link button. See what I'm clicking on here? Uncheck it, so it's not there. Hit the V key. Now look, I can move, now Brian did a dumb thing and I'm selected on the shadow layer, so that's what's moving. So I'm gonna quick, quickly control Z back. Click to the image part of this graffiti layer, the image. Look at how I can move it around the screen. Now, if I click on the mask, then I'm moving the wrong thing around the screen, right? Now, and I control Z back. If I had the link icon on and I use the move tool, then I would again incorrectly move it. See how it's looking weird? Let me control Z back. So uncheck it, just so you remember this in your future, that you can actually take a mask and leave the position alone, but move the image but move the image around the screen. And I'm sorry, I was selected on the mask. So see how easy it is to make a mistake? So I'm gonna click on the image part, hit the V key, and now I can actually move that around the screen and it's so cool. So you did a good job um, on what you showed me, but I wanted you to see how we fixed the drag and drop issue and how to finish the file. Thank you.